Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you from the basement of my Seattle apartment because it is freaking hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hit the subscribe and the bell. It helps out a lot. Thanks. Uh, okay, we have uh, some news from New Jersey that we're going to look into. The New Jersey Devils have come out and made a statement. And uh, you'll see that in the background here, I have a fellow named Dougie Hamilton. The, com the two may combine pretty well together, and this we're going to look at why. Um, the New Jersey Devils are a pretty interesting team. Uh, they, start, they came out in the beginning of the year with a bang. Um, it looks like they might have a number one goaltender in Blackwood. Uh, they've been rebuilding now for a little bit. They got Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer and Sharikovich. Uh, some excellent uh, player, young players coming up pretty quickly. Um, the biggest problem, of course, maybe you don't know this, but we'll look at it, is that uh, they don't really have any defensemen right now. Uh, it's pretty poor there in the defensive side of the game for them. So... We're going to look at um, the statement that was made by ownership for New Jersey and uh, the possibility that those two things just may work out really well. Um, we'll take a look at her here right now. I'm going to have to move things around so you can see it. And... Uh, if it basically, uh, the New Jersey Devils have st stated that they're willing to open up the coffers and start spending some money. They have a significant amount of cap space. And this is from Pro Hockey Rumors. And here we are. Devils given the green light to spill the coffers. It's exactly what it says. Uh, New Jersey has been a team well below the upper limit of the salary cap for a while. Of course, they have been rebuilding. So let's analyze first what the what he's been saying here. Um, this is uh, Brian LaRose who wrote this fine article. Um, Scott O'Neill, the outgoing CEO of owning partnership of the team, made an appearance on the, on the Speak the Devils podcast earlier this week, indicating that Tom Fitzgerald had been given the green light to spend and add to the roster. Let's spill the coffers, says Fitzgerald. Uh, we've, we have plenty of cap space. We've got plenty of picks. Let's, get, let's go get them. We've got the expansion draft going to create opportunity. Fitzy seems like he's locked in. Sorry, this isn't Fitzy. This is a CEO. He's got the green light to go. So they got the green light to go and buy and, you know, add to their roster here. Now, we'll look at their roster in a second, but um, they're still, I think, probably a ways away, although there is enough in there that they can certainly start building on the possibility of getting this close to a playoff team, I would think. They have... Um, it's been a long stretch. They got they got Nico Heischer as a first. Jack Hughes, also a first-round pick, first overall pick, and Nico Heischer. Both of them were first overall picks. Jack Hughes has been had a little bit of time adjusting, but has been done has done very well, um, considering how young he is up until now. He's at the age, and so is Nico Heischer, that breakout years are pretty much in the offering. Mackenzie Blackwood, it says here, has some promise in goal. Has some promise in goal? The guy looks like a stud. I think Mackenzie Blackwood is going to be a number one all day. That's the first thing you really need to do, have, as far to be a playoff contender, is a number one goaltender. Um, they got a first-round pick from sending Palmieri and Travis Zajac to the Islanders, which is the 29th overall. Now, yes, they can use that to add here. Um, I'll bring up a possibility where they can do that if they want to add. Um, and they also have the number four pick, which they could do lots of things with. Uh, maybe looking at that to add as well 
I, I think if they really want, if they really could, they wouldn't. They would use that pick and add in other ways. And we're going to look at the possibility that they can do that. Um, they have plenty of cap space, and cap space in this league right now spells power. They have tons of power right now to go many places, use their draft pick, pick off of people's rosters and stuff like that. So that's great that they're doing that. Now the question is, how far is New Jersey away from being a contender? So let's look at, first of all, they've got two first rounders, a second, a third this year. And they got their first and second next year. Let's make sure you guys can see that all right. Let's move this over so you can see it a little better. Okay. We're going to look at their roster and where they may want to add. Um, looking at their – first of all, they don't really have anybody much to sign this year either. Next year, they're going to have to sign Jack Hughes, which, um, which is going to be pretty much a bridge contract. Um, they have some players that they have to sign next year. Sharon Govich uh, this year, Yanni Kalkinen. None of these players right now. Pavel Zaka, if he has another good year, could be a relatively expensive bridge deal or they could sign him up long term. But their cap space, as you can see, even for next year, and not only that, P.K. Subban comes off the books next year. P.K. Subban comes off the books. They could re-sign him for a lot less, but um, or they could just let him go. Problem is, this is obviously the problem. Ty Smith, Damon Severson are solid. Ty Smith was up for a rookie of the year this year. Um, you know, you could make a you couldn't really make a case that he won it, but he you can make a case that he was the best rookie defenseman in the league, and he's only going to get better. You got him booked up till 2023. Damon Severson at four million till 2023. Then it drops off quite a bit. Will Bitch Butcher really hasn't panned out as an offensive defenseman. He's not really great defensively, and he only got 11 points in 23 games last year. That's not a good combination. <laughs> Poor defensively, not putting up a lot of points. We mentioned PJ Subban comes off the books. Then they were using Kevin Ball and Jonas Siegenthaler. I think ultimately Kevin Ball, who they picked up from the Arizona Coyote in the Hall deal, ultimately they'd like to bring him in a little bit slower than just popping him in the lineup. And uh, Jonas Siegenthaler um, could play in your 5-6 spot, but that's really it. They could use some defense big time. And if they are going to open up the coffers, as we say, um, I think for my money, what I think they're talking about here, as long as he would be willing to do it, I would be all over Dougie Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton as a free agent to me makes the most sense for them. And Dougie Hamilton has said that, you know, it looks like he's been priced out of Carolina. Let's look up defense here. Defense should be top of the list. Dougie Hamilton. He was making $5.75 million a year. Rumor is he is looking for $9 million a year. He had 42 points in 55 games. The last three years, he has been in the conversation as a Vesna or a Norris candidate, and deservingly so. His, he's got awesome offensive numbers. He's got awesome defensive numbers. Um, his, he is an extremely good defenseman on the ice. The problem with Dougie Hamilton has been that he is not great in the room. Dougie Hamilton, uh, this is suggested, and it kind of looks that way when you think about the fact that he was drafted by the Boston Bruins. There was a disagreement there 
where basically the Boston Bruins, when he first came into the league, said he didn't want to be a Bruin. And really, that was their way of saying, well, what, what apparently what happened there is, is they have some rules in Boston. They're a very clean organization, especially about partying and such like that. And Dougie Hamilton didn't seem to want to adhere to those, which means he doesn't want to be a Boston Bruin. He goes to Calgary. Looks like a great deal. Uh, Calgary picks him up for a first, and uh, I think it was a second or something of that nature. Um, and you think, okay, Calgary's got their number one defenseman for a long term. A few years later, all of a sudden, Calgary's using Hamilton to pick up uh, Lynn Holm and uh, a few other players as well, Hannafin. Why? This is a six foot three, two hundred or sorry, six foot six, two hundred twenty nine def- pound defenseman that plays good defensively, gets and has forty two points in 56, 55 games last year. Not even his best offensive season. That's what you have to look at as far as taking Dougie Hamilton. However, New Jersey has shown that they're willing to take guys with a little different personalities. And that's really what Hamilton, what comes down to Hamilton is he's basically saying he's not a bad guy. He's just sort of a free spirit. And he thinks things a little differently than his teammates. And for some reason, he's rubbed his teammates the wrong way. Well, New Jersey has Subban already, and they seem to be getting along fine with him, although he hasn't been that great on the ice, all considering his salary. Where if you have Dougie Hamilton now, and we'll go back to um, New Jersey here. If you have Dougie Hamilton, you've got a guy that maybe might have a little bit of difficulties on the ice. But he is very good on the score sheet and on the, or not difficulties in the room, I should say. Sorry, Hamilton might have some difficulties in the room, but he's very good on the score sheet. P.K. Subban. You don't have either. And he's asking for what P.K. Subban already makes. $9 million a year, apparently. There's going to be competition for Dougie Hamilton. There's no doubt about that. On my show, which I do three to five, uh, five days a week, we have a, we had several suggestions of where Dougie Hamilton may go. One of the most interesting ones was Colorado. I won't get too far into that here right now. But it actually did make some sense. Um, they can fit him in. They would, they would have a beastly lineup. Oh, Johnson. It sounds like Johnson might be retiring. So that would give them space to add another defenseman there, a little more veteran defenseman. Uh, w- with Hamilton, though, how veteran is it really when, if he's not really the greatest room presence? See what I mean? But that would would be one of the teams. L.A. Kings might be in on this. The L.A. Kings have stated that they are, the rebuild is over and they're going to be adding this year, which they already did with the Arvidsson trade. Um, They could use uh, a a defenseman there as well. They have a fairly young defense. And if they really want to push for next year, getting a Dougie Hamilton certainly would uh, bode well for them. They have the cap space to do it. It's really going to come down to where Dougie Hamilton wants to go and how much teams are willing to put in there. Now, it's not the only player that I think that they would they could go for. I think it's the best one that they could go for. And, and if they really want to be significant next year, I think they would even need more than Dougie Hamilton. Uh, Dougie plays left defense, so he could go there beside P.K. Subban or play with Damon Severson and bring Ty, Ty Smith down here. And uh, you've got a really good defense that can move the puck out very well as far as your top four is concerned. The other guy that I was looking at was Jordan Osterle. Jordan Osterle, I won't bring it up right now. He is a he has been a fantastic defenseman as far as being a 5-6 for Arizona for quite some time. He comes in at about two million right now and you could probably get him for three four. I think he's got top three four potential still. He he has played some pretty big minutes at times for Arizona. And he can play both ways. He's a great, he's a good defense. He's a fairly good defensive defenseman. He could slot in here 
down and with Kevin Ball's spot, and you've got Osterle and Siegenthaler, and Ball goes down to the to the uh, minors or and, and gets a little more time, which I think is best for them if they do something of that nature. Finally, then they could start look. New Jersey could start looking at a forward that has some size. If there's one thing that New Jersey really, even with their younger players, Sharon Govich does have some size. He's not what you would call a grinder, but he isn't bad. Zaka came on and played pretty well in uh, in his role finally last year. I say finally, it's taken him a while, and that's okay. Uh, they Pavel Zaka was a sixth in 2015. People were a little bit worried. Sixth overall in 2015, people were a little worried that he wasn't going to become a player. But I was kind of saying all along, give the guy time. He's a big player that's adapting to the NHL, and he adapted really well last year. Um, but you can look at somebody in Tampa Bay that has size and plays with that size. A lot. And that would be a fellow who's injured right now in Kalorn. If you look at, uh, they don't have them in the depth chart here this way. Uh, they're going to need to get rid of a lot of salary in Tampa Bay. Uh, that late first round pick we were talking about just might maybe plus something else get you an Alex Kalorn from Tampa Bay. Um, he's got four and a half million, two more years left, and then he becomes a UFA. Um, they're probably also going to try to get uh, lose Johnson somehow because they tried to lots last year, but they need more than that. They're going to need more than that. And they have some young players, and they almost always do, that can come up and take these spots. Colton Ross, I know that they want to start using more. Uh, Matthew Joseph, these guys can move up into these spots. But that he's got two Stanley Cup rings, possibly, assuming that they win this year. Um, he's big. He's solid. He plays tough. He plays a kind of game that I do believe is missing from New Jersey. Um, he could play. You'd have uh, Yanni Kalkin and Pavel Zaka. You could bring Miles Wood down to the fourth line and fit Kalorn on the third line. And my friends, you're starting to get a fair amount of depth here. You could also put Zaka back in the middle, play McLeod on the fourth line, because all that's really where they wanted to have Zaka. They could try him again back in the middle and have Zaka playing with Kalorn and Nathan Bastion. This is starting to look like a big team that could play tough. And Miles Wood is a guy like that. Uh, he can play tough. And then, of course, you also have now Kalorn. Um, it's looking like a solid team. It's looking like a solid team that could do some damage next year. Yanni Kalkinen, um, 25 points in 50 games. There's no reason to think that Yanni Kalkinen isn't going to be better next year. Um, I'm sure Jack Hughes is going to be better next year. Uh, Nico Heischer coming off his injury will be healthy, be better next year. Pavel Zaka can take a next step. This could be a very exciting team real quick, assuming they add to their defense. And adding Hamilton... And Jordan Osterley, if those are two possibilities, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen there. There are other routes that they could go, but those would be my two favorites. Tell me what you would think here. Did you think there's any more other players that they should add? Uh, any other way that New Jersey could go? Do you think Hamilton's going somewhere else for sure and they don't have a chance? Let me know in the comments section. I'll be doing more videos over the summer. It's like I almost like the summer as much as the irregular season when it comes to hockey. Uh, I just love the moves, and this is going to be one exciting one. So I'll see you there. That's my full 42. Okay, bye.